You're a predictive, preventative maintenance guy versus a reactive guy. That's the name of the game. So and we like doing what we do, and that's why we've sort of kind of really tried to adopt this sort of platform style offering where we're doing property health. Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today we've got an awesome guest on. His name is Nick Benz. He is the Vice President of Operations for Sensors Industry. He's going to come on, tell us a little bit about their products, all of the great things they're doing over there in the technology world, and how it affects hospitality as well as other, other segments of the industry. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Hey, Ted. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. We're very interested in learning more about your product and all the wonderful things it does. But before I do that, I always like to take just a few minutes to have our guests talk a little bit about how you got into the space that you're in. You sound like you're a technology guru, but you play in the hotel space. Talk a little bit about that in you. Yeah, yeah, it might be more than a few minutes, but I'll distill it down. So oddly enough, I, I studied chemistry and math. I thought I was going to be a pharmacist. But at the end of the day, I ended up getting into software engineering. That's how I met this company that I'm currently at and you know, started out as a Python engineer and, uh, and sort of just found myself in the customer advocacy seat, just trying to you know see the product through their eyes and change it accordingly. And so I got into best practices and customer success. And that taught me how to sell it and create these innovative projects. So I got more to business development and then... At this point, I'd touched so many parts of the operation. I just kind of was the ops guy. Here we are. Um, so our, our IoT core platform for all of our solutions uh, is a natural shoe-in <clears throat> for large, large building spaces. So apartment buildings and condos and, of course, hospitality and resorts. Um, and so that's a major vertical for us. So for many years now, uh, we've serviced our solutions to these major, you know, all the big flags and, and many awesome boutiques are running our equipment to fight very specific problems. And it's, it's been a whirlwind. It's been a lot of fun. I've sort of developed that, some of that hospitality parlance and acumen that you got to have if you want to hold a conversation. And um, yeah, it, it's been great. It's been great. Now talk a little bit about your product, your company, and what type of products you guys provide and, and how they work a little bit. Yeah, no, happy to. So uh, I think this requires winding back the clock a little bit. So, I mean, we were a group of technologists that back in 2015 or so, you know, being SoCal natives were like, you know, this drought is pernicious. It, every year it's some sort of new drought, DEFCON 1 level that we reach. Like, how can we take programming and software and technology and move the needle. And so they're home, right? And we're like, you know, it seems like some of the big opportunities are in these large assets where the users and consumers of the water within the asset don't even pay for it. They're not even responsible for its you know, proper usage. And so that's where you get low income housing and, and subsidized housing. That's where you get student housing. And that's where, of course, you get hospitality. Um, so, okay, we found our target audience. Um, where within that realm, so that's a nebulous realm. That, there's all sorts of fixtures and consumption endpoints there. So we did our homework and cross-referenced the EPA and American Water Works studies. And what we learned was the number one water waste fixture, bar none, toilets. Yeah, and I, I'm sure at this point it might become white noise. Everyone knows that. But um, I was certainly startled by it. Um, and it, 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 we've seen, what, while projections might say that 20% of the water used in the properties you know, because of toilet consumption, we've seen it at more like a median of about 50%. And then at times we've seen that roughly half of that 50% can be due to simple malfunctioning leaks. This is noise in the background, water going down the drain, not on the floor, wasting water that no one benefits from. No one's getting a long shower. No one's breaking a water agency ordinance to wash their car, water their lawn. This is, this is non-benefit waste. Um, and so I, awesome. That's where we're focusing. Wait, 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 back up. Did you say that almost 50% of the water leakage loss is due to just simple stuff running down the drain that got nothing to do with people taking long showers? <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to repeat what you said with a little bit of commentary. So we've learned that it's not uncommon for half the water used at a property to be for toilet usage. That's everything okay. under the toilet. And then nearly half of that can be due to waste, like malfunctioning waste. Okay. And so the okay. opportunity cost is that it's not uncommon for us to see upwards of 25% of someone's entire water overhead, as you were, to be for malfunctioning toilets. So then what we do is we triangulate and say, where is your water expensive? And where is that 25% actually mean something to your bottom line? So that kind of gives you an idea of our total area market. As you can imagine, it's a big market because ultimately it's as simple as like, how about we just try and keep your toilets running the way they should? And this has nothing to do with high flow and low flow or new or old or high tech or budget friendly. What we've seen categorically is that all toilets at some point will leak because the two and three dollar parts on the inside, they don't last forever. They they are two and three dollar parts. They age out. They fail. So even though you might have a one thousand dollar insert nice brand here toilet, it's not impossible for it to start to exhibit failure symptoms within 18 months, nine months. Actually, I've seen it at some point. So what we decided to do is like, look, let's create the a lowest barrier of entry possible. Let's create a sensor that's fixture agnostic, meaning that it doesn't matter what kind of toilet you have, this sensor is going to go on and say this, the, or the sensor is going to go on the fixture and say your fixture is running well, it's running correctly. And then when it's not, it says, hey, Ted, this fixture is not running correctly. So we came up with this little novel device. It's a toilet sensor. It's three inches long, porcelain white, takes five minutes to install between the, uh, the supply line on this side and the, or sorry, supply line on this side, the fill valve on this side of your toilet. And um, it, it, it monitors behavior, baselines normal flush behavior and says, hey, the downstairs toilet at, at uh, Ted's Miami mansion uh, takes 21 to 29 seconds to complete a flush cycle. Um, and then once it starts to escape those boundaries, we can categorize it as a leak type. So. I don't need to get too far into that, but generally speaking, we force rank these issues by severity. I don't want people chasing 10 gallon leaks. I don't necessarily even want them chasing a hundred gallon leak. It needs to be justified by their water rate. And so if you're looking at a massive property, if you're looking at a, a, a 300 guest room, you know, Waldorf or something like that, you want to say, look, force rank by the, the worst leaks at the property and provide action items. What do they need to address to resolve the issue? So that's exactly what we've done. So in order to make this scale, this is where the magic sauce comes in. It's a great sensor. It's a nice product, but the magic sauce is our mesh network that allows us to install on these large properties. Again, could be apartments, but for the purpose of this call, hospitality and lodging, where we can install on 20 acre golf resorts with a single access point for internet, that single gateway, and that gateway can run on a SIM card. So at the end of the day, I can bring an entire resort online with thousands of sensors off of a single cellular SIM card. Um, and that's off for us in spades. All right, Nate, now you, you got everybody in interest. Hold on one second. I've got to give a word from our sponsors because they pay the bills. Hey, hey, THM viewers, this episode is being sponsored by Recovered. If you've ever experienced a fire, tornado, or hurricane, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, Recovered is a new app. It allows you to record everything in your home, Store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike versus you trying to recall everything that you had in your household, your valuables, your jewelry, your heirloom, et cetera, to help you settle your claims with your insurance companies a lot faster and take a lot of the headache off of you. If you click the promo code on the screen below, you get 50% off. And as always, we always like to remind our viewers to follow us here on LinkedIn subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can catch this episode with Nick on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. And as always, we appreciate your thoughts and feedback on every segment. Now, back to you, Nick. You are getting to the juicy part, the good stuff, because you're telling me how I can control a single property with my cell phone? Yeah, well, actually, in, in a lot of ways, yeah. So, I mean, whether you have our toilet leak sensors or our flood detection sensors or our shutoff valves, this good stuff, the juicy stuff, right? And we have thousands of these devices installed at your property. Yeah, all of that data, all of that information, those intuitive, actionable analytics are made available on your phone. So 
you can access the dashboard on a computer if you like. I myself, I'm a desk jockey. I like to see the trending or all that good stuff. But yeah, you can get a push notification on your phone saying, Hey Ted, hey Nick, these two, these three toilets at your property are experiencing flapper leaks of this severity right now. They've wasted one, two, and three thousand gallons of water today, respectively. This is how you can fix it. And that's where sort of the rubber meets the road is where suddenly you don't need to be doing, you know, dye tests, like biannual dye tests and plumbing audits to find that spiked water bill culprit. It's become an efficiency and op operation maximizer where uh, a lot of that headache of like chasing down a, a phantom leak goes out the door because we know, because of our research and historical findings, the number one leak type is by toilets. So how would I just tell you when those two or three, again, a minority of the toilets are experiencing issues on any given week. So that's where water conservation comes in. I myself love saving water. That's why we started this whole thing as a group. Um, so when I get to save water and hug trees, it's a win for me, but for you, for the hotelier, this is where you are keeping your fixtures operating as they should, which is important. That's operationally important. Um, but that means you're spending less on water. When you spend less on water, that means your operating costs go down. And when your operating costs go down, your operating income goes up. So for all the CFOs and accountants on the call, so now you're thinking, you're like, well, I know what my cap rate is off and like I can leverage that into uh, uh, unrealized property valuation or however you want to spin that, that's great. And we're happy to help you realize that accordingly. But I got to save water and you got to save money, make money, without even touching your ADR. That's pretty cool. So that's what the toilet sensor does, right? Is, is we're able to combine water savings with cash savings. This is where we really try to differentiate is I'm sure, Ted, you've heard me say this before, along with any of your viewers, but every hotel, in my experience, has this misfit toys closet, this sort of server rack of IPTV and security cameras and access control and all these great things that were in their heyday, great. But at this point, it's fragmented. And no one really knows how it all works anymore, and there's a lot of it. They all do exactly one thing importantly. I don't want to be the next set top box that does one thing. And so when we install that cellular gateway I was telling you about, I want this to be a platform. I want this to be system and property help. So yeah, the toilet sensor is the flagship. That's a great way to address something that everyone wants to do. Say, spend less on, on resource and operating costs. Great. But how do we sort of keep our stay? By expanding the offering. So next in line would be our flood detection sensor. This is a pretty widely available product, but to have it on our platform expands our offering. So this is, again, as many of you are probably familiar, this is a sort of puck-like device. This is what ours looks like. Cut to length probes. So whether you want to pierce through drywall and get inner wall moisture detection, or you want to cut to length and go out a floor baseboard junction behind a sink, however you want to configure it. You can even have it with water sensing rope that we can wrap around pipes and risers and boilers and fixtures, right? And this is where we address your number one and number two and number three ankle biter flood detection problems. Um, this was a similar sort of realization of research where the number one insurance claim by type is indoor water damage. And we have been able to handedly earn our stay within the hospitality space with our customer base. Because when we get to install it scope, when they say, Nick, this is where it hurts. This is our pain point, And we install accordingly using our subject matter expertise. We have a track record of eradicating the problem. So now that's where the magic sauce comes in, right? So I deliver value and risk mitigation, but for the customer, they are now spending less on turning these units that weren't, didn't need to be turned. It wasn't part of the PIP cycle, right? It wasn't part of the seven year cycle, right? But now they have three vertical units of water damage that they have to turn. And yeah, insurance kicks in at some point, but there's still a deductible and a premium hike on the back end, right? If I can make all that go away, it's not the cash savings. It's not the headache savings. It's not the premium savings. It's not the brand tarnishment. It's not the upset guest, you know, screaming at the front desk, you know, agent for a free room or whatever, because their carpet was wet. It's everything. It's the whole kit and caboodle, right? And so that's where I'm delivering risk mitigation. And the hotelier is extracting certainly, you know, reputation, guest experience, but cash savings. So it keeps going. Shut off valves that are triggered by these sensors so that when a 
a jacuzzi tub overflows, it shuts off water to that unit upon or that guest room upon the prompting of a maintenance engineer or someone who gets, you say, controlling it by your phone. Whoever's in charge of that phone will say, hey, this jacuzzi tub's overflowing. Why don't shut off water to that guest room? They're in control of the number one and number two bugaboos at the property. Water waste and water damage. Um, so shut off valves, sub metering. If you want to recognize that on an ES and G level, if you want to say, we want to know how much water we're using as a property and we want to compartmentalize it by guest rooms, guest room types, you know, F and B different segmentation, spa and leisure. We want to figure out where our water is going and demonstrate our savings and report it accordingly. We can help you do that. So, so Nick, let me ask this question. So you've got some great stuff there that you're highlighting. And one of the big things that's going on in the hotel space right now is ESG and sustainability. Have you done any, I don't know, case studies or you had any success stories with clients where you've come in and you said, hey, here's our product. We put these in, we put this here. And all of a sudden, you know, you're saving X amount of gallons of water a month. Your water bill is going down, you know, dramatically. Have you got put together a case study or a success story like that? I'm sure you have. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So generally speaking, you know, we like to do our homework. We want to make sure that the water rate justifies, you know, the implementation of the water conservation, the toilet leak sensor. We want to make sure that there is a, a, um, uh, a prior at the property for water damage um, before we go and install flood detection sensors underneath every PTAC unit. Right. We want to make sure that's actually a real problem. So we do our homework, we do our due diligence. And if it's justified, we solve two things that almost certainly happen. The first thing is that we generally will help them claw back about 15 to 25% of their volumetric water use. How that translates to cash is a whole other thing. Sometimes it's one to one, sometimes it's higher depending on the rate structure. But this can be a six figure savings on operating costs due to water, unnecessary water loss. That's that's a 25% overhead that the property is unknowingly dedicated to leaky toilets, right? And so you're, you're imagining the CFOs, you know, the accountants, they can't fathom that sort of, you know, gap negligence on a, on a resource, but that's okay. We're here to help. Um, so yeah, generally speaking, it's about 15 to 25%, um, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, but generally right in that sweet spot. Uh, flood detect. Oh, if you talk about say an average hotel, say 150 rooms, maybe something like that. And if you're trying to install their, your toilet sensors, some of your other products, you know, if somebody went in and did say full kilt, right? Everything that you're recommending, what would be a typical ROI? And I'm not saying specific, you know, detail, but just ballpark, what would be a typical ROI for someone like that if they went in and installed your product? I mean, is it three years or two years? Is it, I mean, just, I'm just ballparking. Yeah, no, absolutely. So my sweet spot, the company's sweet spot is we want to sort of break the mold. And so we will actually right size our pricing based off of what the opportunity is on your flood events occurrence well, against your water rates. At the end of the day, we want to price this so that we think you'll break even 100% ROI on your system in about 18 months, a year and a half. So that doesn't mean I haven't seen consumer or customers or properties do that in nine months. I've seen it higher. I've seen it far lower, but 18 months is what we, that's our swing zone. Um, and, and we've been able to deliver that. So again, I get to hug my trees and save my water. You get to save cash and pay off this awesome system in a year and a half. And then it's just, it's just a rinse and repeat. It's a capital expense product without a renewal. So after that payback, you're just breaking it in. That's realized operating cash savings. And not to mention, you can take the tail much farther. You can say, look, now our operating staff, they get these smart analytics on where to go and what to fix. They're spending less time playing the needle in the haystack game. Um, when it comes to insurance, it's the same thing, right? It, it's not uncommon for a leak event to not rear its head until it's fallen from the fifth floor to the first floor, wicked up the sheetrock and into the carpet. And now it's not just water damage, it's mold damage and framing and drywall, all that nonsense, right? So if there's a time function here where at some point a maintenance technician will find any toilet leak. At some point, a guest will complain about wet carpet or a funny mold smell. 
at some point, it'll rear its head. Our sort of sneaky objective is to cut that timeline down extraordinarily to almost real time. So as soon as a fixture leaks, you know, as soon as a toilet leaks and meets your threshold, could be 10 gallons, I wouldn't advise it, could be 100 or 200 gallons, I'd advise that, you're alerted. This fixture is malfunctioning now. You're a, you're a, uh, you're a predictive, preventative maintenance guy versus a reactive guy. That's the name of the game. So, and, and we, we like doing what we do. And that's why we've sort of kind of in, in, really tried to adopt this sort of platform style offering where we're doing property health. We're doing resource management on the water side, whether it's at the toilet or sub metering and shot valve for entire risers or units or, or properties. And then we're doing resource management and disaster avoidance on water damage, right? So that's less about gallons saved, more about headaches saved, more about five and six figure insurance checks being saved. Yeah, yeah. And you're also, you know, obviously the, the, the underlying current there is that you're helping save the environment, you know. Yeah, and that's- Reducing that's the strain on it. That's why we started doing this. And, and the, the crux of it was though, in order to make this meaningful for the hospitality space and for hoteliers is we needed to have a cash realization. So even though we want to save the environment and spend less on, and save water and spend less on unnecessary, you know, mid cycle renovations, even though that's our objective, it needs to match the bottom line expectations of your powers. It's exactly what we've done. Yeah, you, you always got to do that for the powers to be, right? Yeah, and when with that comes design and improvement on the device itself, where we get feedback, and that's how we're able to introduce great features. That's like sensitivity centers, where you're like, hey, Nick, if you have a jacuzzi tub that starts leaking, I want to know immediately in that penthouse suite. But if it's a sump pump that services the, you know, one of the pools outside, I don't need to know immediately. I just need to know, you know, maybe in a couple hours so I can get someone out there. But generally speaking, the fallout's fairly minimal, right? And then beyond that, even though you're getting the alerts, even though your boss is getting the email, even though your admin staff got the weekly digest report, all that good stuff, we have an account management team that's also watching this on a daily basis. And if something sort of starts to creep out of expected behavior and we say, hey, you know, Ted or Nick is normally pretty prompt with, you know, with shutting down these work orders, addressing these issues, it's now creeping outside of their normal turn time. I'm going to give them a call. I'm going to check in and say, hey, that 2 a.m. leak in the boiler room, how'd that go? Is that, is that been resolved? What'd you find? Because then we get more information. We get to refine our models even further with your feedback. But not uncommonly, we addressed you of something that maybe slipped through your inbox, maybe something that you forgot about or something that wasn't relayed. And so, that sort of, that, that, that three prong effect of our, in this case, the flood detection sensors, the different form factors with the ropes and the prongs, the virtual sort of account management, the sensitivity settings, those are all largely byproducts of customer feedback where we say, look, we want to save water. We want to mitigate risk for your property. Um, and we believe it'll save you money. Well, it goes on further where they say, that's great, but I need these features to make it even more impactful. And so it's been this fantastic sort of, uh, rotating door of, of feedback and feature sets, um, all of, I mean, largely with the, with the hospitality industry. That's awesome. Let me, uh, let me make sure I give my sponsors all of their time as well. Hey, THM viewers, this episode is sponsored by recovery. If you've experienced a fire, tornado or hurricane, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, recover it app. Is a new app. It allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike versus you trying to remember and recall everything that you had in your home uh, in addition to your jewelry and your heirlooms that are all non-replaceable. So this helps you settle your claims with your insurance companies a lot faster and takes a lot of the headache off of you. Click the promo code below and get 50% off today. And as always, we always ask that you like us on LinkedIn, subscribe to us on YouTube, and you can catch this episode with Nick on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we always appreciate your feedback and thought on every segment. So Nick, wrap this up for us. So tell us all of the great things that 
that that our hotel owners can reach out to you. Obviously, you've laid a lot on us right now, man. That's, I'm still processing all of the good stuff that you just laid out there. But for the for the hotel owners that are interested in learning more about your product, is it like a survey? What's your process for getting someone if they said, hey, I saw you, I saw you on the THM. We want to learn more about your product. What would be the steps that they would need to take to learn more about how they could benefit from your product? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, dealer's choice, right? So you can find us on our website at sensorindustries.com. You can, you know, uh, I, I'm certainly on, you know, other publications and, and podcasts. And, and I'm not sure if you're able to share emails and phone numbers, but you can always email me directly or call me directly. You can call our sales hotline. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a discussion. You, you tell me where it hurts and we'll figure out what the right solution is for you and we'll go from there. Um, but uh, we're happy to kind of offer this sort of bespoke sort of, you know, solution and offering to anyone who's interested. Um, you know, we aren't new. We've been doing this a long time and we're in hundreds of properties all over North America. And it, every property, just like, you know, managers and owners want to believe it's true. Every property is truly unique. So it takes sort of a white glove treatment to you know, figure out the right implementation and sort of feature set and, and qualifications uh, to, to validate that. Um, and, and so that's what we're going to deliver. So if you want to learn more, we have some great stuff online on our website, um, but you can just reach out directly. Um, I, I'm sure that that'll be in the, you know, the heading or whatever, but online on our website, on LinkedIn, you can find us very easily. And you, 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 you're too humble, Nick. You guys doing sounds like you're doing some great stuff, but I, I definitely, uh, appreciate you enlightening our audience today on the products and the service and, and all of the good things that it sounds like your product can do. And, uh, I'm actually excited to see, uh, what kind of feedback we get on this episode, because I think there's a lot of folks out there that are looking for ways to improve their bottom lines without necessarily having to raise their daily rate. And, uh, you know, if they can improve their operating uh, budget line numbers, then I'm thinking that, hey, this is this is a win. Right. And not to mention, you know, we're saving the environment. Yeah. Right. And right now it props overdue. But right now, what's really sexy es and Right. And that's where we dovetail really nicely. Right. So recognizing some of the more water credit style savings and and reducing that unnecessary resource burn. Um, and certainly there, there's something to be said about like, you need to address all of the water waste opportunities, but for some of these brands, they have standards with landscaping and water features and all that. And before those things get axed, perhaps it's worth looking at unnecessary water waste, at least having a nice, you know, some nice shrubbery and grass and, and landscaping serves a purpose. That is a functional role of the property it creates a curb appeal, right? Leaky toilets. Best case, or not, not, for the most part, no one's going to recognize it. If they do recognize it, they're going to call down and say, my toilet's not working, or it's loud, or it's something, right? There is no value in it. And to know that that's 25% of your burn, that seems like, that That seems, um, I, I hate to say it, it's overset, but low-hanging fruit. So baking that into an ESG plan, it, it's never been easy. Man, that's awesome, man. Hey. I appreciate you again giving us a few minutes of your time and, yeah. and coming on to talk about your product, man. And, you know, folks, I think it is a great, great product. I think a lot of folks will be looking for more information on it, you know? Yeah, looking forward to it. Please, please reach out. Happy to chat. And uh, Ted, thank you so much for having me. It's been a great show. Yeah, always a pleasure catching up with you, man. Yeah, uh, we'll see you probably. We'll probably see you at the next conference somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, be, yeah bumping, be bumping into you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. chasing you down. Yeah. <laughs> this, this has been another uh, Ted's Hospitality Minute. Please like us on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as I mentioned, this episode of Nick will be on Apple Podcast and Spotify. We'll see you soon. You guys take care. We'll see you next time. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.